are these people? All right. So I do have one other story, and this was a pretty big one. Um, Ukraine goes dark. And mm -hmm. again, where's the corporate media on this one? I did not really hear them talk about the lights going out in all of Ukraine. Oh, and they, they, they did, but it was, it was Russian Putin, scum. Russian scum. Yeah, it's exactly. Yep. It's like, they so, did, how dare they hit, you, you know, all the power plants. Like, that's going to um, hurt civilians. Uh, right. That is, by the way, so... But that pipeline, though, that pipeline wouldn't have done that either. That pipeline, what? Well, no, that one through there. But, Sorry? Yeah, they forgot to pay their light bill, I guess, according to Big Mad Crab. Again, shout out to Crab for making the thumbnail. But that is an overhead shot, a satellite shot, and we're going to start with that. Satellite images of Ukraine, the first image, which is actually, it's in reverse. The first image was from January 27th of this year at night. Second yeah. image is from November 23rd. Yikes. Yep. Um, Houston. Somebody forgot to pay the light. We have a problem. So what the hell is going on here? So I'm going to ask my friends over at Moon of Alabama. Indie Media Award honorees. To Alabama. Another hundred billion. No, that's not even enough, Eric. We They want even more than that. But Ukraine lights out. No water and soon no heat. Oh my god. Okay. Well, let's see let's see what's going on here earlier today. And again, this was just the other day, the 23rd, 4 days ago. Earlier today, the Russian military shut down the Ukrainian electricity network. Previous attacks limited the, the distribution capacity to some 50% of demand. Cold blackouts or other several hours per day allowed to give some electricity for a few hours to most parts of the parts of the country. The attack today created a much larger problem. Not only were distribution networks attacked, but also so the elements that connect Ukraine's electricity production facilities to the distribution network. All four nuclear power plants of Ukraine with their 15 reactors are now in shutdown mode. Nothing to see here. Please disperse. So Kiev, along with most other cities of Ukraine, no longer has electricity. You saw the overhead shot of nighttime. And, and there are some other pictures yep. and articles. Moldova is likewise affected as it receives some 20% of its electricity from Ukraine. When, it, when the Ukrainian network shut down, Moldova. only the local thermal power plant, power plant shut down too. The only one shut down. The only local power, power plant shut down. It's likely that it can be switched on again, but that can be a complicated process. Limited electricity imports from the European system into Ukraine may still be possible, but possible, but that electricity would only be available in Ukraine's western cities. For today's attack, WAPO reported the, of the difficulties in repairing the network. As we had explained here before, Russian attacks are hitting the transformers that connect the national 330 kilovolt backbone network. These are hard to replace. Sorry to hear that. As the scope of the damage to Ukraine's energy systems has come into focus in recent days, Ukrainian and Western officials have begun sounding the alarm, but are also realizing they have limited recourse. Ukraine's Soviet-era power system cannot be fixed quickly or easily. In some of the worst-hit cities, there is little officials can do other than to urge residents to flee, raising the risk of economic collapse in Ukraine and a spillover refugee crisis in neighboring European countries. Thanks, NATO. Yeah. Ukrainian Prime Minister um, said that about half the country's energy infrastructure was out of order following the, the bombardment. No, you're out of order. For weeks, Russian... This messages, whole courtroom's out of order. Yeah, this whole country's Sorry. out of order. What? It's more like it. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. For weeks... Russian missiles have targeted key components of Ukraine's electrical transmission system, knocking out vital transformers without which it is impossible to supply power to households, businesses, government offices, schools, hospitals, and other critical facilities. Basically, what you would want to do if you want to take out a government that is shelling its own people and not yeah. willing to recognize independent yeah. countries, the independent republics, and 
in the Donetsk, uh, Lugansk, and you know Crimea that we talk about. But during a briefing for reporters yep. on Tuesday, nine years, head of Ukrainego, which is the state-run power grid operator, called the damage to the new power system to the power system colossal. Yeesh, that's a that's a word that mm. you don't want to see the head of a power system talking about. Russians, he yeah. said, were mainly targeting substations, nodes on the electrical grill, grid, where the current is redirected from power stations. The main components of these substations are auto transformers, both high tech and high cost equipment that is difficult to replace. Well, high cost is not a problem when you're getting hundreds of billions of dollars from the U.S. But what what do you think the people will do if they don't have power? Well, that's what the that, that's what the Russians you know? are counting on, and why they're targeting the infrastructure system. A list yes. of urgent needs from yeah. DTEC, the country's largest private energy company, circulating in Washington, lists dozens of transformers along with circuit breakers, bushings, and transformer oil. But it's the auto transformers, the heart of the substation. The words, in the words of this uh, this minister, or this head of the energy. Uh, uh, faction that are at the top of Ukrainians list of needs and the key to keeping the country's electrical grid functioning. What happened to Burisma, by the way? <laughs> Ukrainians have tried to buy up every auto transformer they can find as going as far as South Korea to purchase auto transformers, but they still need to, to place orders for more to even be built. Talk about supply chain issues. Yeah. Oh, we try to collect everything around the world that they have now and order more. An advisor to Ukraine's energy ministry quoted. Any attempts to repair the network are useless as long as Russia continues to attack it. And yet they won't call for a ceasefire. To stop these attacks requires a political solution and Ukraine will have to give up and find some agreement with Russia. Maybe they'll actually listen at some point. Russia also attacked some of the natural gas sources Ukraine has. Ah, we asked about Burisma. Russia last week broadened yep. its targets. Uh, their chief executive of Ukraine state energy company, Naftogaz, said in an interview that a massive rocket attack hit 10 gas production facilities in Kharkiv and Poltava regions, including Shebelinka, one of the largest production and drilling areas. Yikes. Of course, we will do our best now to recover, but this will take time and resources and material. Time is of the essence because winter is now. Yes, winter is coming. <laughs> this does feel very Game of Thrones. Yep. And I saw a quote like from the Russian, uh, from the Ukrainian first lady about how they're willing to live without power and heat for two to three years. Good luck with that. The targeting okay. of the gas supply. It was a critical development, said Victoria Wojciska, who's a former member of parliament, now working with civil society groups on getting Ukraine the equipment it needs. If Moscow takes out the gas system, she said, cities and villages across the country would become, quote, uninhabitable. <whistles> Kelly, good night. Thanks for hanging out. As always, love you. Russian gas provider Gazprom has announced that it will reduce the transport of gas through Ukraine to U European customers as the Ukraine is stealing from it. Of course they are. So, Gazprom has noticed, said that it noticed some of the gas intended for Novo Moldova under a contract with the local gas firm is being diverted <coughs> by Ukraine. If the imbalance in gas transit continues, Gazprom will start reducing gas flows via Ukraine on the morning of November 28th, Russian gas giant said today, as carried by Russian news agency TASS. That's actually in the morning, so we'll have to find out and follow up if that happens. Without electricity, yep. there's also no water flowing in the water distribution cities and systems of the cities. Without water, toilets can't be used. Public hygiene will suffer. And oh yeah, the internet in Ukraine is also down. They're not talking about this anywhere. But Ukraine's winning, right, guys? I, I had people tell me over Thanksgiving weekend they think Ukraine's winning. This does not sound like winning. Mm -hmm. 
A country no. that is becoming uninhabitable has little chance to wage and win a war. When there is no transport, no electricity, no heat, and no communication, everything becomes incredibly difficult. The refugee stream, all this will cause, will increase pressure on Europe to push Ukraine into negotiating peace for Russia, uh, peace with Russia. Tough conditions will be applied, but there is no other way out of this mess. Yes, holy shit, Russia is still providing gas to Ukraine. How about that? While still bombing them. Because Ukraine has to buy it from somebody, they need to power their country. Throughout the last weeks, Ukrainian attacks on the front line have been remarkably ineffective. Again, not telling you this on mainstream corporate media. There is no longer any coordination of larger formations. The units attacking now are mostly only company sides or even smaller. And they link a 12-minute video that showed drone footage of such an attack that was published yesterday. Quote, I can't believe I missed this one today. The editing is unbelievable. A 12-minute clip of Ukrainians conducting what was sadly a suicide attack on Russian trenches. Just to be pummeled by SU-25s, infantry, heavy mortars, a tank, MLRs, and a f and finished with an SU-34 bombing run. Oh my god! So basically, making sure god. that the area was completely destroyed and there was nothing left. Completely cleared. Yeah. Sitting on top of an armored infantry vehicle, some twenty Ukrainian soldiers drive up to a fortified area and into the first empty row of trenches. From there, they try to attack the second row of trenches that is held by a handful of Russian soldiers. The Ukrainian troops seem to be fairly well equipped with helmets and armor vests, but they have no support. The Russian infantry fights back. It's supported by well-targeted mortar fire, artillery, tank, and air attacks. The Russians have drones up in the air that can see the whole scene. The Ukrainian units have nothing but their rifles and a few hand grenades. After the attacking platoon is destroyed, the Russian artillery attacks and destroys the industrial area from where they had been coming. The whole operation ends up as a complete disaster. All Ukrainian troops involved seem to be dead. The Russian side seems to have had no or only few casualties. This place took th this battle took place some time ago, but it's still incredible to watch now that they made the concise edit. If we consider that such attacks have been Happened by the dozens every week. The Russian Minister of Ministry of Defense estimates uh, estimates of Ukrainian daily losses aren't that far fetched. Well, there are several such attacks per day, and only a few are successful. Very few are successful. So, from today's clobber list, I can't even imagine that there is such a thing. But there's a link here to a clobber list. So here is in Donetsk. Mm -hmm. Units of Russian army continued their intense operation. More than 60 Ukrainian servicemen and five armored fighting vehicles have been eliminated. Again, this was war. I'm, we're anti-war. We don't want to see anybody killed. Um, this we, we want to see this stop. There's no reason for any of this anymore at all. In South Donetsk direction, artillery fire and, and decisive actions by Russian troops, Russian troops have repulsed an attack by the AFU with up to a company's tactical group forces towards Pavlovka. In addition, as a result of a preemptive fire attack, enemy reserves advancing from Ugladar have been destroyed. Uh, a sabotage and recon group of the AFU has been destroyed near Nova Dakrova. So again, you can see like there's a bunch. The enemy losses amounted to more than 40 Ukrainian servicemen killed and wounded, three armored vehicles, an MTLB, and four pickup trucks. They're taking out a bunch of stuff here, it seems like. Okay, again, you've got near Lugansk, supported by artillery fire and heavy flamethrower systems. As a result, artillery, Russian artillery fire, more than 30 Ukrainian servicemen, two motor vehicles, and one mortar have been destroyed. Okay, again, they're just showing in different areas <clears throat> another 20 servicemen. Okay, 72 artillery units, and, and they're going to add this up, and he's going to say, they're going to say, that are, that adds up, that are, that is at least 150 dead Ukrainian soldiers just there. I do not understand how the Ukrainian command is still ordering such senseless attacks militarily. It should have long gone into defensive mode. It would save Ukrainian lives and would make it more costly for the Russians to attack. But they're under orders, we know from NATO. Like how you said, do 
Yep. You were like, dude, I don't understand. It but sounded it, Canadian or like you like because study. it said no. It said it. Yeah, it, it, it said do not, I, and you read it as do. Oh, I do European not, Parliament. I don't know. Which has, by the way, no serious legislative function. Voted today for a non-binding resolution that declared Russia to be, and of course we know lo love to Mick Wallace and to Claire Daly, but and they called this out. It's ridiculous that Russia is a state sponsor of terrorism. Really? Some Russians found this outrageous. A few hours later, the parliament was hit by a sophisticated cyber attack. The EP website was affected by a hacking attack, officials said Wednesday. How about that? Parliament President Roberta Metsola said it was a sophisticated attack and that a pro-Kremlin group had claimed responsibility. She noted that the attack followed the EU lawmakers' vote to name Russia a state sponsor terrorism over its war in Ukraine. And her response, of course, is Slava Ukraini. Oh. That, ir that irrelevant Maltese conservative still has a lot to learn. Maltese conservative. Okay. Well, no, she's, from, she's literally from Malta. It's a fucking... Parliament okay. president from Malta. Roberta I mean, but he's Metsola. also playing off the... Yes. The Maltese Falcon. The, yes. the Falcon of the famous, yeah. Yes. So yeah. before we uh, head over and, and hang out, um, Man, these, are, these are all the links and all the different logos and all the different properties and all the different things you can check out. We've got IndieLeft.com and IndieLeft.news and IndieLeft.media, which is the link tree to all the links, and IndieMedia.today and IndieMediaToday.com, which go to the Substack. And you've got independentleft.media, which also goes to the link tree, and independentleft.news, which is the main website. And, oh yeah, independentleft.shop. We actually have a merch store for the Bong Father, and we have an INN shop as well. I think it's uh, indienews.shop. Yep. Indienews.shop. And you can go there too. Yep. So, yep, X, to answer your question... INN, we are a member channel of INN, and we are the founders of INN, but we are separate from INN. We are our own channel, and we're building both channels, as well as supporting all the other channels and members of INN who we love and appreciate. Uh, but, hey, and we're back to two shots. So, um, yep, X. So, says, what the U.S. media also fails to report on is that there is a much bigger war between Russia and Ukraine. It's about the U.S. is losing its hegemony, and about the shift in economic and political power. 100%. They don't you want to talk about that. Multipolarity? You mean... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the BRICS okay. alliance. Yep. 100%. The economic um, sanctioning. The Jam like, Mom. I'm guessing yep. that's Mad Mom Anon. How are you? Welcome. Good to see you. And we've got Eric T. Red. Patron supporter of Indie Left. Appreciate you, my friend. Sabby Sabs, producer, engineer, extraordinaire. <clears throat> and destroying energy infrastructure is a crime. Yes. Then what is the destroying of Nord Stream 1 and 2? Wait. Actually, what we have found, dot com. Um, and again, I'm speculating here, and I'm going to be careful about what I'm speculating, but the evidence seems to point to a U.S. directed operation that was coordinated and executed by the Polish um, military and, and special forces in coordination with British special forces. And Kit Klarenberg has done a, quite a bit in the Gray Zone UK to uncover that. Shout out to Kit Klarenberg. He's also an Indie Media Award honoree. If you can go and give Kit Klarenberg a, a share on Twitter, he's awesome. 